Hello there people, this is Christian and I'm playing around with Fusion Physics again and I'm gonna go back to my home view. Uh, and this is from a Facebook question. Uh, this, I've, I thought the geometry was interesting and, and this has something to do to my, to my daily work. This is an inspection hut hatch for circular air ducts or sheet metal ducts, circular ones. Uh, and uh, the question about making a spanner for these handles here, I would really just say that these should only be uh, tightened with fingers, not with tools. Because what you're doing here, this thing here is made to be, you cut like a slot hole in the circular duct that is running in this direction. And these are two sheet metal parts with a gasket on the inner one, so they are about the same size. You can slide it sideways to get it inside the slot hole as you cut that normally the size of the inner edge here you can see and then you just uh, tighten these two together to squeeze the gasket to the side of the duct so uh, over tension this here will not make the seal here close better because the distance from this the tension point here out to edge is too long but i like the challenge making something the question was to create the sketch for an outside spanner to fit over this one here so let's see if we can do that and also talk about things. I will only focus on how to make the thing over here. And I make also a so small assumption that there is a small draft angle here on this one. So uh, we want to create a sketch with dimensions which we can measure in real life. So let's do that. We create a sketch. Let's do it from the top. We're going to start with some lines. I'm going to create one sixth of this because this is like a hexagon shape. Uh, so there are six repetitive patterns on this one. So we're going to start with some lines, L on the keyboard. Going to make one long line here. Make sure it's horizontal. We're going to turn this into construction geometry. This is going to help. No, wrong. Sorry, wrong constraint. I want a midpoint constraint of this line to the center point here. We're going to use symmetry because these two lines here are going to be symmetric around this one. They should also be equal. So like that, that's that far. We can move this in slightly. I have so far not put in any dimensions. Uh, this cut out here is an arc, or I suppose it's an arc, so we can use a circle. We're just gonna do two circles slightly off everything here. Uh, these two, can you please stop? They're gonna be equal, like that. I'm gonna mark the down here and make that a construction one. We're gonna make a coincident between circle and this point circle and uh, this point let's see we can move it sl slightly below where I want no, 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 no. I want you to move like that because I use a coincidence again make uh, this center point coincident to a line here this to a line here so they cannot now not move sideways only in and out and we can change size so you can see we're using constraints to fix everything where we want it Can we twist a bit? Here to, oh, we need a dimension. Let's do our first dimension. This one here is the angle from here to here. That's going to be 360 divided by 6, which of course is 60 degrees, which can be typed in if I want to. But I like doing math in Fusion sometimes. Uh, let's move this slightly downwards. We're going to make two more lines. I'm just going to make them out here, like that. And the second line. I hit L on the keyboard to start lines. I will not tell everything I'm doing sometimes. I'm oh, sorry, I missed that. Midpoint, uh, this line to this point. Uh, this line to this point. Uh, make them perpendicular. Like uh, that. Like uh, that. We make coincident with this point in here. Yes, there are other ways you can do it that might be faster. We have now created most thing. Uh, I normally don't trim, but in this case, I like to trim off this part. As like that, we're gonna make one more line. It's gonna be construction line from here. S oops, sometimes fusion does two lines. Lines one again from here, somewhere out here like that. Tell fusion we want it to be collinear with this and this. We also tell fusion these are equal. That means uh, means uh, this line here is from. Let's look at the image from here all the way down to here. That's easy to measure in real life. The second dimension, we have a great, the dotted construction line here is from inside here to up here. So let's start doing some dimensions. These are just taken out of thin air. Let's do this 50. Let's do 
the dimension from here up to that line like that let's do that 60 let's see if we can crash our sketch not so far so the own whoops look at it it's so sensitive let's not be too wild here now so like that so the last thing uh, that's quite easy you got two choices you can measure zoom in you could measure the straight edge here or the distance from this uh, arc point here to this arc point here let's show it over here we can dimension from here to here uh, let's do like uh, 20 or we can remove this one and dimension uh, this line here make sure you get it in a line so let's do that 11.5 both of those will give you a fully constrained sketch uh, I think this would be the easiest one to measure. So let's do that 20. So by that we have done like a one. Uh, this is the knob. So this is going to be the cutout in our spanner. So we need uh, a circle also for our spanner. So let's do it. Sorry, not construction. Just a circle like that. Circle or C on the keyboard. And we're going to add one more dimension. D. And then I right click, select pick a circle arc tangent because I want the distance from the circle here to the further outmost point of our cutout which is going to be this point so let's do the 10 millimeters so I want at least 10 millimeters material here so now I can green uh, if some dimensions should be wrong I can now easily change this to like 51 I should be quite close when design as I'm not totally off my dimensions so by doing that we're going to finish sketch we're going to do an extrude we're going to extrude everything to start with that let's do it uh, minus 60 millimeters like that after that we're going to extrude e on the keyboard our cutout this let's do is minus 20 like that and that looks nice uh, the problem i have here i think there's a draft angle of this here and i also would like to do if, if i do two like this i would want this to be the outer outer faces here to be slightly drafted outwards so let's use that can we find the menu draft and the uh, pull direction we're going to select the bottom face of a cutout and the face you want to do is this one Th this one hold down if you have problems selecting faces select the one you can't select hold down control and you can select more faces and by that we need an angle four degrees i can turn on the sketch again you can see this was my original sketch this is how it pulls outwards see what that ends up with did that work looks like I missed one face let's do that yeah I missed that one control and uh, that one now it gets confused let's do it this here and the faces are this one hold down control this one and this one yeah now it gets better it's a bit sensitive when you select things go back so we can look from the right direction so we can see here we have now that much gap let's leave at only two degrees i think that's enough if we want to we can expect how much it is we use the inspect tool we select the sketch line uh, it can be a bit hard here to find like we might hold down yes we can find the edge there it is so we have zero point uh, yeah, zero point seven millimeters of gap here now from the sketch dimension we have so you can play around with that I hide the sketch S on the keyboard to search for functions. We're going to do circular pattern. Circular pattern. We can do it on features. So that's our extrude and our draft axis. We can click on the axis, but as we have a cylinder, we can just click on the face of the cylinder and it's time what to do. Normally it says free. I will try this workflow just to make sure I didn't do make too many mistakes. You're going to do six of these. Uh, you can make it optimized, make it faster. It doesn't matter if it's little here. You can do adjust, but if you go to larger patterns, try to use optimized. And like that, we can check our sketch. We have some room there. Good. Uh, the last thing, there's a bolt in the middle. So we'd like to create a sketch on the bottom face here. Do a circle. I should guess it's a uh, M8, so let's do that 10 millimeters. Extrude uh, that one, let's do it something like minus 25 millimeters. Hide all the sketches. And by that, we're done the basic shape. Now we're going to free to print it, going to free to print in this direction. You can leave it like this. If you're going to free to print it with this face downward, I would uh, use some chamfers uh, like here. New, no, not that one. This face here. 
give it 5 millimeter something like that could be helpful to help you with bridging still with problems in the bottom here but make a corner a bit stronger so that's a bit more playing around so that's how I would set up the sketches and by adding hide the body using two circles and stuff like that and only sketching one sixth of them and then using patterns on features to make a stable model so and the possibility of course to go back and add the dimension or maybe maybe by uh, a thick material 12 millimeters finish sketch and the model if i turn on the bodies gets updated with a thicker uh, outer shell of a spanner uh, I hope this can be useful, even if it was a very short and bit speedy video. With that, take care, see you around, and goodbye.